welcome. Thank you, my family, friends, co-workers, neighbors, universe, to what else, you guys? Maria loves to talk. You guys, how you been doing? Y'all getting ready for the holidays? Halloween is over. The election, oh my God, do not get me to talk about the election. I will have a separate video, separate video on the election, okay? We're getting ready for what else? Thanksgiving. You guys are already, we already have our hams. I bought three hams week before last. Um, it's like a honey baked ham, but I got them on sale at Walmart. I got it before anybody else. I heard and grabbed them, threw them in my basket. I got one for us, my one of my sisters, one of my brother-in-law. Yes, we're set. I already have all my canned goods and veggies and whatnot. I just can't believe it, you guys. I can't. Thanksgiving is going to be week after next. Then Christmas. Uh, New Year's Eve. You know, I, I, I just can't believe it. I can't. So enough with me just can't believe in it. What is this video about? What am I talking about? Everybody's been on me. You guys, that's why I'm saying I did not know. It's been eight months since I did my video on uh, Joni Lamb and her husband and her children and Daystar. I don't know if I talked about TVN. So what I'm doing, I am doing, um, I wouldn't call it a part two. I'm doing some corrections. I'm going back. Yes, because y'all told me that I made a boo-boo. So I'm going back and I'm correcting the boo-boo. I'm also talking about some other things. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the election. This will be about the people. Um, I'm going to talk about Bishop Jake and o Joe Osteen and someone else on, a, on another video. So on this one, I'll be talking about Pastor Wes Morgan, uh, Kenneth Copeland, a little bit about Paula White. It's, it's going to be just a mixture of things. And of course, I'm going to throw in the... Um, the election when I noticed what a lot of the pastors that was talking week before the elections, different little things that I caught on, I was listening to. Some of them, I, I agree with some of them. I, I didn't really agree with. So yeah, that's what we're talking about today. So you know the drill. Go get you some snacks. I don't know. Cantaloupe, turkey salad. The first story is about Pastor Peter Wren, W-R-E-N, and he's from Alabama. I want to make sure I get this person's right. Uh, Van, V-A-N, Varner, V-A-R-N-E-R, asked me like several months ago, what was the update to this story that I did about Pastor uh, Peter Wren? A few months ago. In fact, I did the story December 11, 2022. And I had to call due to the courthouse to get this information. And yes, I'll probably be doing my own little preaching on this subject. So here, this is from uh, 6 WBRC and the title read as such. Birmingham pastor indicted on S ends with X, abuse charges. Uh, they have him with the little prison or the jail jumpsuit. 72-year-old is accused of blank abuse of a minor between the ages of 12 and 16. They didn't say if this was a little girl or, or a little boy. They did say he had been bonded out of jail. Attorney Emery Anthony is representing Rand. In a statement, he says Rand will plead not guilty to the charges. We are waiting for the, his day in court to come out. And I believe that was about it. The church is called East Birmingham Church of God in Christ, which we all know that's a holiness church. So when um, Van Warner asked me, is there any updates? Um, I was like, I don't know. And I went and I looked and I want to share with you guys. It's not just me. There's other YouTubers doing stories. So when we do stories, you know, you're doing so many stories, you don't have time to come back, especially like with this. They didn't say what his bond was. They didn't say when the next court date. 
you're doing so many stories, you don't have time to go back and look and see. And then someone they, I don't know if it's Van, if it's a, a chick or a dude, I went back to look. I don't see any updates. So let's just pretend that I'm hired by Tyler Perry or Steven Spielberg. And they say, hey, Marie, we want you to go out and find us a pastor or a bishop because we want him to be in our next movie. And I go out and I look and I say, oh, okay, I like this pastor. I like his name. I like the way he looked. And then I look. I'm like, wait a minute. He's been charged. He's, he's been put in jail for ABCD. Guess what, you guys? I don't have time. We don't have time to go back and look all over Google, whatnot, to, to see, has there been an update? Did he go to court? Was it dismissed? Did he go to prison? Blah, 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 blah. So guess what? I called to the courthouse, uh, criminal court. Did I get the lady's name? It says here, DA, DA, district attorney moved for want of prosecution. So any legal eagles, I don't remember all that. Uh, I worked in bankruptcy when I worked at the federal building. So, you know, I wasn't in, in the criminal courts. I don't remember all, any of that. Uh, dismissed November the 16th, 2023. So remember, I did this story in 2022. This happened in October 14, 2021. They just dismissed this man case last year around the holidays, November 16th. And I tried to find out from the lady. Did she give me a case number? I was trying to find out um, what happened, why. I was trying to look up, you know, what does that mean? What would cause a case uh, to be basically dismissed? I couldn't find anything. Uh, I don't want to speculate, but I'll put it out like this. These people are really quick to put a person's information out, labeling them a bad person, a criminal, uh, a boogeyman. But when these cases are dismissed or found to be bogus or, you know, whatever, they're not that quick to go back into the system or update the news people or update the uh, writers to put this information that, hey, this man, he has been found uh, innocent. His case has been thrown out. It's been dismissed. I don't know if the person, the child recanted their statement or they didn't show up for court or the or the case, you know, dragged on. Um, I'm be keep it real. You know, I don't know if um, sometimes with these type of cases, not just these cases, cases in general, we see it all the time. Sometimes if you give the courts or the judge more money for their, allegedly, for their next uh, campaign, you can get cases and whatnot dismissed or thrown out. I'm just saying. But remember, all we have is our reputation. All we have it's our integrity. You know, you can you can buy hair. You can get a hair transplant. You can buy a suit. You you can lose weight. Um, you can uh, get a new job. People who lose everything and go bankruptcy, a lot of them go back and they go, go bigger than what they lost. But once your reputation has been uh, tampered with, tainted, destroyed, that's hard. To, to get to gain that back and this man is 72 years old so i'm i'm just because i don't want to you know just assume that you know that he's not really innocent or that the child whoever lied or or maybe the parent or whoever pressured the child uh to recant they say i don't know we just got to go on what they say here and november the 16th 2023 this case has been dismissed and no one went back and updated this. So that way, if Tyler Perry, Steven Spielberg, wanted to ask Pastor Wren to be in their next My Dear um, comedy, I don't know, could be a documentary, 
They're going to look and like, okay, they don't have time to do like what I did to get on the phone and call to the courthouse 205-325-5491. What was the other? Can you give me some information on the on the good pastor, on the rev? They, don't, they ain't going to have time to do all that. So prayers go out to everybody involved. And I want to thank you. Um, one of my, I don't, I don't know if this person is a regular, you know, I don't know if you're a subscriber, but uh, thank you for bringing that to my attention because that goes for a whole bunch of stories. Not that, not only me, but other YouTubers have done. And these people cases probably have been just like this man. Dismissed, thrown out, not enough evidence, person recanted or whatnot. So yeah, I wanted to say that. Um, moving on to... The next story, Joni Lamb of Daystar and her husband, Dr. Doug West, or Wise, W-E-I-S-S. -S. Now here, uh, let's go here. So someone, y'all corrected me. Thank you. I just haven't had time, you guys. I know y'all mad at me to go back and correct something I said. Uh, yes. Jonathan West is not is not related to dr doug west my mistake you guys guess what it was sitting right there in my face and when i went to edit it i i cut that off so yes i i'm, I'm a big woman I, I i do have my big girl draws on and i don't have a problem when i'm wrong to say i was wrong i apologize i am sorry okay yes it says here, Jonathan West's parents, uh, her, the daughter that's married to him is Rebecca. Okay, and Rachel is the blonde married to, I can't think of her husband's name, but he's the, the bald guy that's a, a musician. So it says, Jonathan's parents are Miles, M-Y-L-E-S, and Catherine Wise. Dr. Doug Wise married Joni Lamb in June of 2023. Okay, and we remember her husband uh, passed like a year or so. Uh, here it says, um, yeah, Jonathan and Rebecca are married. So both of these men are Jewish. Okay, the young guy's Jewish and the older man. Uh, so John, John Wise, Jonathan. Rebecca's husband, the one with the black hair, they said, I was wondering what do these guys do? Do they have, I'm keeping it real, you guys. Do they have jobs? Do they work? Are they working for a day start? Because, you know, a lot of times with a lot of these big churches, mega, mega uh, churches, uh, with them, that this is not a church, this is a, a broadcasting. The When these daughters or the sons marry someone, they all work. At the church or whatnot, they give them positions and stuff. I'm like, do these people have jobs? So John is co-chief executive officer of corporate and investment banking at Wells Fargo and serves on the company's operating committee. That's what he does. Um, Rachel's husband, uh, sister of Jonathan Lamb, and I'm gonna talk about him because I'm like, where is he at? He's like a wall. What happened? And Rebecca Lamb, so husband Joshua Brown, he's got an accent, he's from Australia, was music director for Rebecca St. James, tour manager for Peter Furler, and music director, tour manager for Cindy Cruz Radcliffe. He plays keyboard for Christian group Planet Shakers. I don't know what that is. Um, I find that interesting um i know they did a nice tribute to um dr doug for father's day this year they were saying that they wanted to thank him for him being a role model role model and his uh leadership so let's get right quick to um the son who's been missing in action i i, I just looked just now on the look I uh, saw his wife have a Facebook page. She hasn't been active or said anything since May. I didn't see his Facebook. I see they both have an Instagram page. Uh, he posted something in June. Was it June? It was September. So let's see. It was September 2023. It wasn't recent. And everybody's been asking him, 
where are you? We miss you. We love you. So here it says, this is Jonathan, the son, and he looks just like his dad. He says, my wife and I have received a huge number of messages asking if we are leaving Daystar. The answer is clear and de definite no. We are absolutely not leaving Daystar. I serve as the vice president and am in the office daily. As for returning to television, we don't have a timeline of when that will be. Since I was a young boy, I have always known my calling was at Daystar to serve God and my father's legacy. I will never walk away from it. I stand faithfully where God has me and keeps me. Susie and I are grateful for your prayers, love, and concern. We love you all. Now, I did see he's in some, uh, not some, but he's telling people to go to another Instagram page. It's called Build, Build Different Ministry. So I don't know if he's working with these guys or these, uh, these young men because all I see is pictures of other people. I don't really see him in it. So uh, let me just nip it in the bud here uh, before I go to the PPE loans. Uh, I know people were saying that they thought that he was going to take over the ministry or his mom, Joni, should have. Uh, why is she doesn't have him in front? Uh, why is the husband, the new husband, Mr. Doug, Dr. Doug is all over the place. Um, I just saw right before the elections, they had Kenneth Copeland and some other men at the round table. I think it was that Tuesday night or was it that Monday night of the elections? And then I think that same week, they were showing her husband's uh, Marcus Lamb uh, sermons. And I, I've been noticing, I don't know if anybody can tell me, and I'm not being messy, I'm just keeping it real. You are married. You have a new husband who is a therapist, a doctor for people with S, the ends with X addictions and whatnot. Why are you constantly, every month or every two months, using Marcus Lamb's? old sermons to me yeah they old sermons uh are when he preached at different places to raise money to to have uh uh people on like a telephone type you know remember how they used to have the uh remember when i was a little kid uh jerry lewis would have the telethon that's what they have every two three months she got a telethon where they got people uh, asking or as my, my mammy used to say, they just begging for money. They just begging for money. You married to a new man. Why are you using the old man to, to get money? And then are they showing the people when they raise this money? I'm just curious. How much did you raise? How much are you actually giving to the Israel Jewish community or or to uh, the food, to the hunger, to the, the, the women or the, the babies. I'm just curious. Uh, I know I saw some people saying that uh, they didn't know why was she sitting to the back. She got her husband sitting to the front when they're interviewing guests and she's sitting off to the back. And remember, and I'll show like a picture, when it was her and her husband, Marcus, he always had her sitting closer to the guests. Like this is the guest and she's here. And then he was on the side. Now she's got her husband sitting where I am. And he, she's sitting behind him to the side and the guest is right here. And I was like, and I noticed I'm not being messy. He'd be struggling when he's looking for in his Bible for scriptures and whatnot. I do want to say something I noticed with her daughters and I'm not, and I, I like them. Uh, what they should do. Uh, I feel that they owe it to the uh, people, the people who watch, and to the people who give and donate. Not only I notice with Daystar, but I notice with TBN, they ask people uh, to donate their houses, 
property, land. I guess if these people don't have any relatives or any um, heirs or whatnot. I feel that they owe the public, she owes the public a responsibility. Where is your son? Okay, where is your son? Why is he not participating? He's been doing the show uh, with his wife, uh, Susie, since like, what, 2014, 2016 or something? There was a picture I saw of him and his dad, and every time I look at that picture, I could just see the love, not just see the love, just see, feel the love that he had, the way he looked at his dad. They had just a good, strong relationship, father, son, which a lot of young men should have that. We do have men that have it, but you don't see a lot of it. Um, I want to know. We, we need to know what happened to the old boy. What happened to Jonathan? Why you took him and threw him in the back and you got old Dr. Doug right there front and center. Um, also, I want to go back to the daughters, Rachel and Rebecca. When, uh, Mr., when Pastor, uh, Pastor Jimmy Evans, uh, especially with him, and I noticed other guests come on when they have the little round table and all the women, and there's this one lady, I cannot remember her name, but she's a young black lady, middle-aged black lady, but she's one of the singers that sing with Joey. The last time I saw them, uh, Pastor Jimmy Evans was on. He was on one side of the table, and then Rachel and Rebecca was here, and the lady uh, was next to Joni, and the lady was trying to ask uh, Pastor Jimmy a question about uh, raising kids, because I think that's what his book was about, raising children, and she was trying to get out that she was a single mother raising two boys. She couldn't finish her question with Joni like grabbing her hand to like basically tell her to be quiet. Let let um Rachel talk. They talk between her and Rebecca. Nobody could could ask a question. Nobody could get a word in. Uh Pastor Jimmy barely could get a word in to talk about his book. I think it would be a good idea to give these two young ladies a spot. Let them have their own show, at least 30 minutes, talking about, you know, what it is being a, a new mother, a young mom, a young married couple, raising little bitty kids, maybe even having some young Christian women come in on, uh, maybe taking calls from callers. Yeah, I, I just gave y'all a good idea, ladies. But yeah. Y'all, that I don't, I don't want to tarry with this too long, but I wanted to come on and say my little words, say my little piece, tell y'all I messed up, I boo-boo, saying that the father-in-law and the the young man, they were related. Now, all this other stuff about him, when he divorced his wife, you know, when he called up Joni and told her he was available, he was divorced, he was single. I'm not going to go through all that. Y'all can look at my video. I talked about that. Uh, I'm not going to go through about the, the house. I'm not going to talk about her wedding dress. I, I, my attitude about um, mature women, older women. If you can rock it, if you can wear it and look good in it, do it. I just have a problem with her wedding dress. I thought she looked nice and I thought she looked good. Uh, she's an attractive lady. Uh, giving her son the wheel or giving these kids the the wheel of the business the leg of the business she's still young she's still got a good 25 30 years ahead of us her uh parents people have to be careful with just throwing the business at these kids these days okay because i have seen a lot of people throw the business Give the business, hand over the business, hand over the rental homes, hand over the apartment complex to their kids. And the kids go crazy, buck wild, and they go through the money, they mismanage things, they have layoffs, and then the business dissolves. Everything mommy, daddy, or papa, or grandma work for, these kids get and bam. So, yeah. She has a reason maybe for not handing over the keys to the building to Jonathan.
when she and her husband Marcus was Jonathan and Susie's age or Rachel, I don't know the other girl, what Rachel and Rebecca, they they was building Daystar. Okay, so yeah, I I don't think she needs to hand over the the building the business to them, but the public, I'm sorry, they need to know there's some kind of disconnect, some problem issues. I mean, it's obvious. We're not dumb. We're not blind. You know, even Ray Charles, Ronnie Millsap can see that. Okay.